Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I have six orchids for you that can grow beautifully and without any type of issue in very, very low humidity environments, which I know some of you actually are confronted with. Do not worry though, I'm here to give you the best of the best when it comes to orchids which can handle low humidity. And I'm not talking about the orchids which survive in low humidity, but would do so much better in higher humidity. No. I'm talking about the orchids that will literally show absolutely no difference if you grow them in high humidity versus low humidity. So with that said, don't forget to give this video a like if you do end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? It is totally free and I post three times a week. So with that said, let's start with the orchids, which in my opinion are the toughest ones when it comes to low humidity. And these are the kitties. And all of the genera related to them, such as Rhincolalias and Brassavolas and others, and also their hybrids and their intergeneric hybrids, I think there are very, very, very few exceptions. Maybe Sophronides are not as tough, but when it comes to low humidity, I don't think you can do better than this. These guys are tough as nails. Bonus, they are so, so gorgeous and you're gonna see quite a few kitties from me in the following months. It's their season, I have buds and spikes and everything nice. And yet another bonus, these are the most fragrant orchids you can actually own. No joke, this particular one, which is the Burana Beauty, smells like the most beautiful rose in the world and even sitting next to it is just wonderful. They are currently at a tie with Oncidiums as being my favorite group of orchids simply because they are just so diverse. There is such a wide array of hybrids to choose from and also species and they're super duper fragrant and I'm a fragrance freak. And if that wasn't enough, I can grow these guys outside in my 45 degrees Celsius. By the way, funny thing, this year Cypress registered the highest temperature in 60 years or ever. One of the two. We had 47 degrees Celsius in the month of September. Although my boyfriend's car recorded a little bit more than that, but anyway. And look at these guys, they're all grown outside in 47 degrees Celsius. In the shade, not in the sun, I don't want to scorch them. And I assure you, humidity is super low right now outside. They're not even bothered. They're blooming nicely. They don't even have dried petal margins. No issue whatsoever. This one took a little bit of a beating because we had high winds at some point, but other than that, they are absolutely perfect. So definitely, if you're looking to upgrade your collection from Phalaenopsis to something else, consider Cattleyas. They're super tough. They do have a few quirks that you should know about, but they're not hard to keep at all. And I will be sure to include in the description below my super extended Catlia care tutorial, which talks all about their quirks, their features, and also I show you how to properly repot one of these orchids so you have the least setback and issues as possible. Next up, another very, very tough and tolerant group of orchids. These are the Vanda orchids and quite a few other related genera such as the Renantheras, Arachnis, and I'm sure there are a few others with the exception of the Neophenicias. Neos have recently been reclassified as Vandas, but in my opinion, they're a totally different thing when it comes to culture. So when I talk about Vandas, I typically never refer to Neophenicias. Now, you'll be surprised that I placed Vandas below Catleas. Well, as I was saying, when it comes to 47 degrees Celsius, there is a difference between the two. And this difference comes from the nature of the orchid itself. One is a sympodial, the Catlea, and one is a monopodial, the Vanda. And this means that from the get-go, the Vanda has less structures to retain water and nutrients. This, however, doesn't mean that it's completely helpless. Oh no, in my opinion, it is the toughest monopodial you can have. And again, because it's coming from very, very hot regions, naturally, it has a set of skills that can overcome low humidity, high temperatures, drought, and things of the sorts. It is just not as tolerant as the Cattleya. And in cultivation, Vandas can be grown bare-rooted, potted. There are various ways in which you can grow this orchid. And if you don't know anything about it, check the description. I'll be sure to link you my tutorial on Vandas. They're quite easy to keep. And as long as you can make sure that you hydrate them, you water their roots, you really shouldn't worry about humidity because they absolutely do not care. Their leaves are so, so thick 
they lose water very, very slow. You can keep a Vanga unwatered, bare rooted in 40 degrees Celsius outside for a week and it will not show signs of dehydration. After a week, you might start to see a little wrinkle or two in the leaves, but a healthy developed Vanga is super tolerant to low humidity. So if you want to grow this orchid in your home, you can absolutely do so. You don't need to keep it in super hot temperatures. Yes, it can tolerate them. It enjoys warmth generally. So as long as you don't grow it cool, you should be absolutely fine. You don't need to put a radiator on it. And obviously you don't need to decrease humidity. Whatever type of humidity you have in your home should be absolutely fine with them. Again, as long as you can properly hydrate them periodically, meaning you don't skip watering day way too much. And this is valid, in my opinion, for all monopodial orchids. Sympodials generally are more tolerant to drought, but humidity and drought are not necessarily the same thing. So keep your Vanda hydrated. And when it comes to humidity, try not to worry. I would definitely not go out of my way with humidity trays, pebble trays, humidifiers, and all of those things. You don't need them for Vanda orchids. If you have them in your home, that's great. But Vandas are pretty unimpressed with all of these things we try to do for them. They are more impressed with light though. That's a different story. Next up, we have the Dendrobium phalaenopsis orchids, which is another group of orchids that I'm growing outside in the scorching heat and the lowest humidity of life, pretty much. Do they care? Absolutely not, because Dendrobium fowls are some of the toughest orchids you can have. They are almost right up there with the Cattleya orchids, but they do have their own little quirks and light is definitely one of them, but humidity definitely isn't. In all of these seven and actually more, eight years or so that I've been growing the Androbium phalaenopsis, never have I had issues when it came to humidity. With these guys, the most important feature of their care is light. The brighter, the better. If you don't give them bright light, they will not perform to the best of their abilities. They will not bloom nicely. They will not grow as fast. And together with good light, they also do enjoy very warm temperatures and are very, very, very tolerant to heat not so tolerant to colder temperatures. Humidity is a non-issue for these orchids. Will they not appreciate some higher humidity? Sure they will. Who will say no to higher humidity? But is it actually essential for them? Absolutely not. As I was saying, I believe they're almost up there with the cat layout orchids when it comes to humidity and other things. They are tough little orchids. It's very hard to make a Dendrobium phalaenopsis die on you but they do have their quirks as well. And if you still wanna learn more about these orchids, again, check the description. I have a tutorial, I have a tutorial for everything. So just check the description, you'll find stuff there. Next up here, we have a species. This is the famous Maxillaria tenifolia or the coconut orchid, which is one of the most popular species because it's a very hardy, very tolerant and very rewarding orchid. P.S. If you've never heard of it, check the description. Again, I have a tutorial on it. The main attraction of this plant is the fact that it smells like coconuts, although I will be honest, I detect peaches. So if you like the looks of it and the scent sounds intriguing, well, rest assured that you can grow this orchid in your home. You don't need a greenhouse, you don't need pebble trays or anything of the sorts. She is so, so tough and so forgiving even with beginners. This does not mean it doesn't have its quirks. It enjoys bright light and it really fusses if you skip watering day. This is the type of plant which really requires to be rather moist than dry, even though it is an epiphyte, so you have to be careful not to suffocate the root system. But as long as you make sure you keep it hydrated, you should not have any type of issues with the ambient humidity. The way to know it is time to water is to look at the pseudobulbs. When you see they are kind of shriveled, then definitely check the pot and the medium to see if your orchid needs water. Generally speaking, as long as the medium is damp, it does not need water, but rarely can you actually do any damage by watering this orchid. Again, as long as the roots are airy and the medium is fluffy. Sadly, it only blooms once a year, but luckily, just look at it, it's so interesting. And the best thing is, with each year, it will grow bushier and bushier and look better and better in my opinion. So if you like this orchid and you have a brightly lit corner of your home, definitely this is the orchid for you. And you should be able to find this orchid at most orchid nurseries. If not right now, then wait it out. It will appear it's a super, super popular orchid. 
Next group of orchids, which is super tolerant to low humidity, surprise, surprise, it is the Phalaenopsis. Not all Phalaenopsis are the same. There are some species which are coming from higher elevations, lower temperatures, higher humidity. However, the so-called flower shop Phalaenopsis, which is a complex hybrid obtained by people, and also the summer bloomers really don't care much about humidity. Now I know what you're thinking, but Danny, I read all of these articles and everybody says to put humidity trays and to mist them and do all of these things to increase humidity because they will enjoy it. Well, let me tell you a very, very well-kept grower's secret. They don't care. They care about none of that because these are super tough little cookies. And sure, they care about a lot of things. They care about the light you are providing, how frequently you water them, how ventilated their environment is, how much sun you give them. But at the very, very, very bottom of their care list is humidity. And you just gotta have to trust me on this one. Now, will they say no to some higher humidity? Absolutely not. But can you make up for the lack of humidity with making sure that you don't dehydrate your orchid? Absolutely. And with the Phalaenopsis that you can find in flower shops, things are even better than with the summer bloomers. The summer bloomers, I wouldn't necessarily say you will see major differences the higher the humidity. I actually grew these guys outside in the scorching heat and in the lowest summer humidity that I could possibly give them and they grew vegetatively really, really nice. Keeping them in whatever conditions you have in your home will do. And if you're new to orchids in general and you've never owned a Phalaenopsis, do check the description. I have, oh, an entire series of orchids care for beginners when it comes to Phalaenopsis. I seriously don't think you'll hear me speak in that series about humidity. I might mention it like, I don't know, randomly, but for those of you who know me, I think you know by now that I'm not really keen on humidity. And this is because these orchids really, really don't need it. I would focus on watering more than humidity. And the last orchid that I'm gonna show you is my wild card because this is a hybrid. And this is the Epicatlea Rene Marquez Flamethrower. I'm showing you this orchid because I wanna talk about some epidendrums. Epidendrums are related to Catleas, but they look very, very different. They can be crossed together, but when you look at something like this, you cannot really say that you're looking at a Catlea, right? And wait till you see the flowers not really looking like a Cattleya. So I chose to take them separately because including them in the Cattleya group that I talked about can be a little bit misleading. At the same time, not all epidendrums are very humidity tolerant. Reed stem epidendrums are super tolerant to low humidity. The epidendrum Stamfordianum is also very, very tolerant. But here's the catch. The epidendrum Pseudopidendrum is not as tolerant. And it just so happens that it is a parent of this orchid. But this orchid is a hybrid with a Cattleya. And what happened was this orchid looks a little bit more like the Epidendrum, but has the tolerance of the Cattleya parent. So what we have here is a super, super tough, and I mean super tough orchid that looks out of this world and can take pretty much anything you can throw at it. It is drought tolerant, temperature tolerant, and sun tolerant to some extent. I actually have it on my terrace growing outside in one of the brightest locations. And it gets hot, like the leaves get hot during the day. And except for this thing right here, which I don't even know when it happened. I don't think it happened this year. I actually don't have sunburn on this orchid. So I didn't want to show it to you because it's one of those very popular orchids, very iconic orchids you might see for sale. And if you're wondering if it's drought tolerant because it has that weird epidendrum parent, yes, it is because it gets the trait from the Cattleya. And I do believe it is worth mentioning, even as a wild card, because the orchid itself is just so wild. It is one of my favorites. Just look at those colors. I assure you, in reality, they are as bright, as happy and colorful as you see them on your screen. I purchased this orchid when she was much, much tinier and in the few years that I had it, it produced longer and longer canes, more canes. Now I have one, two, three, four new canes. I started with one direction of growth and all of these canes, if big enough, have the potential to bloom. And typically they bloom once a year. So you can imagine that beautiful inflorescence in time becomes larger and larger and larger. It is an orchid worth looking into if you find it for sale. And if you're worried your home is not adequate, 
It is. It doesn't need to be in the heat. It likes warmth generally. It's a tough cookie, definitely recommend it, and it belongs on the list, to be fully honest. So that's about it on the most tolerant orchids when it comes to humidity. I'm sure there are others, but I don't have all the orchids in the world. Therefore, I invite you all to tell me in a comment what other orchids you find very, very humidity tolerant, what orchids you grow in your home without any type of issue when it comes to the subject. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll have a great weekend. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye!